This is part eight in my series on cheap electronics kits. So this is uh, sold on eBay. I paid um, just under 10 pounds delivered for this. And it's supposed to be a ham radio transceiver. So um, should be quite an interesting build. Uh, I don't know much about uh, ham radio operation and uh, my best friend at college was a ham radio operator. So he was into all that Charlie Oscar Delta underpants stuff. Um, but I never really got into it, uh, but uh, here's the reason I originally got uh, interested in RF uh, systems and in my own businesses I spent uh, many decades developing RF systems and uh, RF is an extremely interesting topic and I do highly recommend it as a type of electronics to investigate. Um, so without further ado we'll get into this. Uh, I'm not going to build a 40 foot tower uh, in my garden to test this but we can hook it up to a spectrum analyzer and see uh, how, what its output looks like, whether it meets um, the specification it's given and uh, how clean that output signal is. So let's get this unpacked and see what's in the kit. As ever, this is not a full review of the final working product. This is more about the value of the kit itself as a kind of learning tool and a, uh, what the fun factor is for uh, putting this together. Okay, so a fairly cheap ball, but uh, doesn't look too bad. This does come with a laser cut case as well. Okay, and the even the resistors are preformed. So let's have a look, see what's in here. So we've got the case itself. Uh, the usual, um, we'll have to peel off the cover ourselves that's probably going to take more time than assembling the rest of the kit uh, quite nicely packaged uh, all in separate bags okay so that's the parts that are in the kit uh, looks quite nice um, but of course what's missing here are instructions this is all that came in the package um, there are no instructions with it and I cannot see any component designators other than the, the, the names, um, the cross-reference names, uh, R1, R2, that sort of thing, uh, on the board. The resistors are not all the same value, so we will need to try and find some instructions. So I'll go and have a dig around on the internet and see if I can find any assembly instructions for this kit. Okay, I think I've found what I believe are the correct instructions. So it's uh, 24 pages and uh, I've had a quick look through and it appears to be about five pages worth of information in here. So um, and they just keep repeating the same pictures for some reason and um, really no need to make it quite so expensive to print off. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is just so it's just the same images repeated over and over again. Not quite sure why they've done that. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. And it's just going to tell us which components to fit where. So I'll start off with the resistors. We'll get these fitted and um, go from there. So we'll resistors first, uh, then we'll go on to the capacitors, inductors, and then onto the mechanical components. So I'll get the resistors in place and uh, see how well they solder into the board. So that's the resistors fitted. They all went in there very nicely. Uh, what's in the kit tied up very nicely with these instructions. And um, the board itself is very easy to solder. Some of these cheap boards don't take solder very well, but this one's um, very good. It just solders very easily. So next thing is we'll fit the capacitors and uh, hopefully that will tie up with what's in the instructions as well. That's the capacitors fitted and again the instructions tied up nicely with what was in the kit. The next thing we'll fit um, are the inductors. Let's get this uh, bag opened up. So we've just got a few inductors here. So we'll get those fitted and um, go from there. 
that's the inductors fitted so the next thing we'll fit is the IC socket and the electrolytics so I'll get those done okay we've got the IC socket and the electrolytics fitted so the next thing we'll fit is the bridge rectifier and the crystal and the jumper so we'll get those fitted and then we'll see what's left after that okay that just leaves a couple of diodes and a couple of transistors and then uh, we can get on to the mechanical parts okay that's all the basic parts fitted uh, the resistor here um, says this is a uh, resistor for a dummy load so the output of this will of course be 50 ohms so this allows us to uh, feed the output directly into a resistor rather than into an antenna if we don't have anything suitable I'll probably use um, a spectrum analyzer that has a 50 ohm input rather than this so uh, we'll see how that goes later on but um, I'll also leave the diode out for now until I can uh, see exactly where it needs to go relative to the case it might need spacing um, to fit the case properly so what we'll do now is fit the mechanical parts and uh, we're pretty much ready then for the first power up so I've got the board fully assembled um, I haven't put the outer case on just yet I want to test this and uh, we may have to park around if it's not working I've got a couple of 50 ohm antennas connected I'm not going to connect it directly to the spectrum analyzer with a uh, coax I don't know how well behaved this board is and um, uh, spectrum analyzers are very easy to destroy if you feed too much power into them the specification for this is uh, it says it's working at 7.023 megahertz so that's the 40 meter uh, ham radio band and it says um, power at transmit is 1.2 watts I think it means that's how much power it's going to use from the supply I very much doubt this will put 1.2 watts out in uh, terms of RF energy I've had a, a read through the manual there's some information in there it's um, a bit of a Chinglish manual but there is some uh, fairly reasonable information to read through it gives a brief description as to how this works um, but in essence this is um, a BFO system it's kind of given away by the fact that the crystal is also 7.023 megahertz so the local oscillator is the same as our uh, carrier uh, frequency it uh, states that the uh, maximum um, deviation um, is about 3 kilohertz so it's an AM system but um, the, um, the, the output of the mixer will give us an image up to 3 kilohertz away depending on the modulation that we provide it with um, the, hopefully this will make sense as um, we, we run through this uh, very brief test I've got an earpiece uh, connected to the phone output and I've got that just hanging next to my microphone so before we start this I've got no idea how well behaved this will be it's going to throw out all sorts of RF I suspect so please no complaints if we get loud whistles and pops and whines on the microphone uh, you've been warned so if you are uh, susceptible to that sort of thing I suggest you don't watch uh, any further into this video because I've got no idea uh, how this is going to affect the microphone on my camera um, I've also got uh, 12 volt power supply to this and the key um, input is just connected to a jumper so it's just a CW system so I can um, enable and disable the uh, transmitter the um, reception side is a bit dubious to be honest there's, there's nothing really in terms of uh, gain on the input for the receiver so I suspect this is going to have very poor discrimination and um, could pick up all sorts of things and the there is no filtering so I suspect we're going to see a very strong um, image for our output signal but um, what we'll do is get this um, set up so we can start doing some very basic testing and see if it actually works so to start with we'll set the frequency of the uh, spectrum analyzer to match what we're expecting 
on the off chance that it's going to work. So that's 7.023 megahertz. We'll give it plenty of input attenuation because I don't know quite how strong the output signal from this will be. Okay, and um, we'll set the span up to We'll be optimistic here and set it at 5 kilohertz. We'll now power it up before we uh, create any um, signals from our uh, transmitter, which is what we're using the Juntek for. We'll power up the board and see if it can actually generate an RF output signal. So we'll turn our 12 volts on. Okay, and straight away we can see what is most likely bleed through of the local oscillator which it is it's not uh, in transmit mode yet when I short the pins uh, hopefully we should get a, uh, a tone and a transmission okay I'm going to remove the jumper and hopefully that will stop that uh, horrendous howl that's just the sounder letting us know that we are transmitting but I believe the LED uh, will do the same thing it should come on when we transmit which it is and we are indeed seeing um, a signal output so uh, we'll see what the level is it's at minus 37 db at the moment so i'll put the antennas closer together and we should get a stronger signal so minus 17 minus 16 i'm just going to remove a bit of the attenuation Okay, so a fairly low level signal, it's at minus 16, but we are looking here at a very poorly uh, coupled signal, so it's probably around 0 dB that's actually coming out of the board. But it's quite nice and stable, so that looks uh, quite good. I can't hear anything coming out of the uh, earpiece, so it's not picking anything up at the moment. Now the Juntek output I've got connected just through to a length of wire. Uh, it's not obviously the right length for this uh, frequency of operation but um, it should be sufficient for us to be able to uh, pick something up. Now of course because we've got the, everything close together and we've got the antenna for the uh, spectrum analyzer here as well we're going to pick up the signal directly from the, uh, the Juntek. So, We'll stop the transmission and we're now we're left just with the, um, the local oscillator. We'll now power up the Juntek and we'll get it set up to the correct frequency of operation. So we'll set this to 7.023 megahertz. Okay, so we'll switch on the Juntek. And we can now see the, uh, the carrier in effect that we are transmitting from our sending station. And it's at exactly 7.023 megahertz. If you're interested, it's coming through at uh, minus 42 dB, but that's kind of irrelevant. Um, as I said, the Gentech is just um, connected to a length of wire. If we now turn on our transceiver, not much has changed and uh, we can't hear anything coming out of the earpiece uh, and that's because uh, we don't have any modulation currently on the transmitting station so if we come in and we switch on modulation uh, we should hear something which we can so I don't know if you can actually hear that it's fairly low level but we are getting a tone coming out of the earpiece from the transceiver board and notice also we're getting these two peaks appearing and if I turn off the transceiver board notice those two peaks remain and that's because they're coming from the Juntek that's um, what we're effectively doing here is uh, generating uh, signals that are bleeding directly through into the antenna of the uh, spectrum analyzer 
Um, but what we can hear is the tone, and the tone is the difference between, it's the output of the mixer, and it's the difference between the uh, carrier frequency and our local oscillator frequency. When I say carrier frequency, I mean the frequency of the Juntek. So if we alter the frequency of the local oscillator, we can just see this peak here, which is the local oscillator bleeding through into the, you know, it's coming out of the antenna, or probably straight out of the board actually, uh, into the antenna of the spectrum analyzer. If we modify this, we should be able to see this peak move up and down, and we can hear the tone change as the difference between the carrier and the local oscillator alters. So at a fairly low level, so what I'm going to try and do is increase the level of the signal. Okay, so we're getting a louder signal. So it does appear to be working, so we can transmit. Uh, we can probably receive on it. I don't think it's going to be very sensitive. Um, there is quite a high level of signal going into the antenna and it's only a, a foot or so away from uh, our uh, transceiver board. So I very much doubt we'll be able to hear anyone in Australia with this, uh, even with a decent sized antenna. But it will be interesting to hear from anyone that's built one of these and connected it to a decent antenna to see how well the reception works. Um, I'm not sure they'd be brave enough to try and transmit with it. Uh, I very much doubt it would meet the uh, RA requirements, but uh, it's certainly a bit of fun. And uh, as I said earlier, playing about with RF is a very interesting topic. So. Um, in terms of uh, the purpose of our video, was this worth the money I spent on it? Um, you can get these kits for about uh, five pounds without the case. I paid just under 10 pounds for this kit. In terms of uh, the quality of the kit, I'd say it's good. Um, in terms of build fun, yeah, it was uh, quite a, a nice kit to put together. It uh, soldered nicely. All the bits uh, were there and correct and fitted nicely. And uh, it's also quite um, an educational kit in terms of figuring out uh, which uh, values are uh, which and, which, uh, and where they go. Um, in terms of uh, fun playing about with it after it's built, I think this could be a very interesting kit to play with. I think there's a lot that you can do with this, a lot you can learn with it about RF. So um, I'd give this a definite thumbs up. I think this was well worth the money I paid for it and I think uh, it's well worth getting one of these if you want to have a, a play about with some uh, RF electronics.